All right, guys, today we're going to do a live stream of an acrylic painting of this right here. Let me get this brightness up. We're going to do this Jordan Pond in Acadia National Park in Maine. I'm just going to pull up the video on my computer so that I can watch the chat. Just give me one second. Grayscale, hello! Davey, how's it going, guys? All right, let's angle that a little better. There we go. Okay, thumbs up. <laughs> it's been a little while since I did a stream, so I'm back in my studio in Pittsburgh. Um, I'm working on a lot of studio paintings right now. I did a lot of oil paintings this week and I didn't record any of those uh, because my computer is not, it's, it's struggling with holding data. It's like almost full and I keep deleting things but I'm like running out of space. So I gotta get a new laptop. So we're gonna do <laughs> a live stream so I don't have to put hours of footage onto my computer, edit that and then post it. We're just gonna do a stream instead. And I can chat with you guys too while I work. All right, so we're using acrylic paint today. These are my Liquitex, soft bodied acrylics. I really like these paints. The colors we're using today are light blue violet. This one is flesh tint, raw, uh, burnt umber or raw umber, either one works there. Titanium white, sap green. This one's uh, bright aqua green, phthalo green, ultramarine blue, cadmium free yellow medium. This one is, what's this one, vivid. Lime green, phthalo blue, cadmium free red light, yellow ochre, lizard crimson, and last but not least is burnt sienna. This is a nice, buy a separate hard drive, gray scale. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea, Anthony. <laughs> I have like a backup one, but I, I need to, I guess I should buy one for putting actual videos on. That's a good idea. <laughs> That'll hold me over until I can get a new laptop. All right, but those are the colors we're using today. And then for our brushes, we got like a handful of brushes. Probably use the bigger one for the sky. And this one's like a smaller round tip brush, like a semi-round filbert brush. And a couple of other round tip brushes that are smaller. Um, I have a flat tip brush, we'll use that too. And then I have a cup of water right here. I have a 11 by 14 inch canvas panel today. And I also have some paper towels. I'll list these colors in the description uh, after this video is uploaded and I'm done working on it today. I'm going to work on this today for about 45 minutes and anything that I don't get done today, I will continue recording and we'll make that be next week's video. As the crow flies hiking, hello. Thanks, this is gonna be good. So we're gonna do Acadia National Park. This is a photo, I'm referencing a photo that I took at Jordan Pond in like a late September afternoon. It was a nice warm sunny day. It's gonna be a really nice little painting. All right, so we're gonna start with, let me fix one thing here, there we go. All right, we're gonna start with this small round tip brush. Just gonna dip down the water. Get a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm just gonna put a little tick where in general center is and then just divide the painting into quadrants here. So we got one, two, three, four. And now I'm gonna sketch out the scene. So my water line in the background here is pretty flat. It's not perfect, but it's pretty flat. And it's just above, about a half inch above my middle line. And this is a landscape, so things don't have to be perfect. If you have a little bit of an angle there, or you decided to put your horizon line with the water contacting the hill a little farther down or up, that's fine too. Then we have, let's start this about right here, so if you separate this one into left and right, just a little bit past that, put a little 
dab there. And then looking up here from this point to the top, if we put if that's halfway, that is basically where this hill starts, the top of the hill. And then you just kind of want to go out and do a little arc, kind of make it more straight, a little less arky as you come to right there at that point. And then right above center, you're going to have another hill come out and come down just like that. What's everybody up to today? It's really hot here in Pennsylvania. Feels good to be inside. <laughs> and let's see, I'm gonna leave the sky for now. We have some plants up here, but I'm not going to t do that yet. I'm gonna do the background sky first and then we'll layer that over. I will, however, sketch out our uh, intersection line, the, the contact point between water and the ground here. And this one, there's like a lot of rocks. So I guess if you make it simple, it's just like a diagonal from here to there. And then you have a lot of random little rocks, just kind of make some shapes, rounded shapes. Some of them come out a little bit more. This one's partially underwater. This is gonna be one that kind of helps bring the painting to life. Whenever you have a rock that's like part over above water and part underwater, it becomes like a really helpful thing in making your painting look realistic. More rocks down there. It's in the 80s here in New York. Yep, it's pretty pretty hot. In the northeast today. <laughs> All right, and then we've just got like grasses and stuff down here. Another little rock, like right there. All right, so that's like the basic stuff that we needed to sketch out. Now we'll start working on the sky. So I'm just gonna take my big fluffy brush and we're gonna. This brush is dying. <laughs> Do you guys have any really old brushes that probably you should throw away, but you don't? That's this brush. All right, we're gonna get some white with some phthalo blue and phthalo green. Blend those together. A little more phthalo, eh. Yeah, a little more phthalo blue. And we're just gonna put that right across the top. If you need to blend a little more, you can. I have a very strong pigmented phthalo green and I always forget that that is a very strong pig pigmented green. And I only needed a tiny bit to mix in there. And then I'm just gonna take some white and just kind of blend that right on the canvas. Going back and forth with your brush strokes. You can kind of go over your line a little bit. That initial line with the mountain or hills there just to get good coverage and not leave any white space where the sky is. And we'll take a little more phthalo blue. And I'm gonna blend that at the top and just go back and forth, working my way down a little bit. And then we get a really nice soft blend of color there. Oh, Davy says it's been raining all day in north of England, but not too cold. Nice, that's good. Brushes that are past their due date make wonderful foliage brushes for me. Yes, very true. Yep, they're great for when you want to just get some little like dabs of some plants in there. All right, we're gonna let the sky dry for a little bit, then we'll add some clouds after that layer dries. And we're gonna put this brush in there and we'll switch to this flat tip brush and we'll start to do some of the hillside here. So there are some rocks sticking out here. There's like some rocks that look like a lot of boulders that have like fallen and broken into pieces down here. And then there's green trees with a little bit of autumn foliage everywhere else. So I guess I'll start my base color off with some sap green, some phthalo green, some burnt umber, 
some white and a little phthalo blue. And let's get a little more white and umber. And now you just kind of repaint that line in and go back and forth with your brush once you get that line giving you like a border and just basically fill in all the space down to the water line give you a nice base color and then this one back here is farther away so we're going to mix in a little bit of white and a little bit of our light blue violet and then put this color down and that helps to create that distance by adding a little bit of white and a blue color in there. You could have done that one first. That probably would have made more sense, but it's all good. There we go. And we'll let that dry for a little bit. I'm going to rinse off my brush. And then we're gonna do the base color for Jordan Pond. So we're gonna start with some bright aqua green, some phthalo blue. This is a really pretty turquoise water here. More aqua. And probably could have used my bigger brush here, but oh well. You can use a bigger brush here if you wanna get things done faster. And we just go back and forth. Can take a little bit of white right in here. The trick for the water is to work quickly here because we want to be able to blend. So there I just used some of my phthalo blue with the aqua and no white. I'm gonna use a little phthalo green in here too, right here. Kind of blend these two together, a little phthalo in there. And then it's a little lighter in the back, there's some light reflecting over here. And then we have a little bit of the mountain or the hill color reflecting in the water. So I'm gonna take some sap green Thalo blue, ultramarine blue, and umber. And just put that right here. I'm gonna make that nice and dark. Go right up to where your mountain was. You don't wanna leave any white space. You can kind of just pull this down. And now is where, this, is, this part's fun. You get, this is where we kind of just work in the wet paint to get a good blend and kind of make it look like we've got this water, some ripples. So I'm mixing a little bit of phthalo in there, cleaned off my brush just a little bit, and we're getting some shadows, the phthalo. A little more phthalo and some umber. this in here, deep shadow color. And I'll take some phthalo green over here for these shadows. So we've got more like more grays, like there's white and black blended in in the back here. It's more blue here, a little more phthalo green here and more of the bright aqua here. And then whenever we get to the section where the rocks are, we can we start to get some yellows and purples in there too. Lots of colors in the water. We've got some shadows underneath here.
Can't even tell in my photo if these are ripples on top of the water or shadows underneath. I'm gonna rinse off that brush. And we'll take some whites with a little bit of that aqua again. Just make things nice and bright over here, more aqua. It's going back and forth. Adding more aqua highlights in between these little deep shadows. And kind of make them kind of make like a sweeping Thalo green in there. All right, let me start blending some ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson into here. Oh, let's do a little umber too. Where we're starting to get some rocks kind of hiding in there. A little bit of our flesh tints. And you kind of just want to let it fade out into the other colors. You, you lift up your brush as you're starting to blend in with the other colors so it doesn't like force too much color on there. You want to have like a bit of a transition. And we'll take some ochre, flesh tint, white, and some sienna. Put these down here. Just starting to add some colors. There's a lot of deep shadow colors in here. Mixing a little green and with my ochre for over here. Yeah, let's get a little more white plus um, phthalo green. Ochre. Some ochre and some cadmium red, some yellow. Start to get a little bit more of the warmer colors visible right down here. And we are going to have some deep shadows in there. All right, let's take some white. Some sienna, and we'll just start to get a little bit of these rocks above water. And take the extra paint off my brush, get a little bit of ultramarine and some umber, and a little bit of the crimson, some more white. And then for down here under the water, we're going to mix some ultramarine blue and crimson with our greens that were already on there and a little bit of yellow in there too. We're going to make like a black color. You can make a really dark neutral color by mixing blue, yellow, and red. A shadow on the back of this rock. Just 
see I've got a big rock here some shadows in here some big rock right here Alright, let's go to a small round tip brush and start getting some of the lighter colors in these rocks. I'm just mixing some white with my flesh tint in this section that had a little bit of ochre and other colors mixed in there too. And you just want to fill in the shapes for your rocks. Your rocks don't have to be exactly where mine are. You could put rocks wherever you want, wherever it feels like a good balance. Take a little bit of thalo, or um, not thalo, <laughs> ochre on your brush. A little bit of ochre here. A little bit of ochre on this one too. And take more of that dark color. Some white for the top of this one. We're not focusing on the details too much just yet. We're just trying to get the rocks filled in with like a basic little bit of color so we know in general where we have some shadows on our rocks and where each rock will be. There's a shadow on this side. Then we're going to take some yellow ochre with some uh, burnt sienna and white. I've got a nice warm looking rock right here that goes, it gets wet and that one's going to be darker. I'm going to put a little bit of brown around the base of it so I remember that it goes down. And then we kind of lose it. Okay, and then we've got another one. It's like a light ochre color right here. And then I'm realizing I made this rock too small. So we're gonna come back, touch up this rock, make it a little bit wider. Oh, there is a hello. Dave's getting a cup of tea. Very nice. <laughs> Anthony, are you done posing on cliffs or does Penelope have more perils to pursue? <laughs> nice. Yep, I have more perils to pursue. <laughs> done done uh, with the cliffs for now. And then uh, later this summer, we're going to Montana and then Wyoming. And then we come back to Pittsburgh, and then like two weeks later, I have a solo exhibition <laughs> art show. So I will be in crunch mode for that. <laughs> Teresa says, I loved it, beautiful, hello. <laughs> All right, we'll take some more flush tint, and now we can add this little rock here. Got another rock right there. I'll make this rock bigger too, why not? Get some phthalo with some red and some yellow. One more red and some ultramarine. Just mixing like a really dark neutral color. Cause I forgot to put black on here today, but you can make a color pretty close to black. I think it's a little easier to mix oil paints than it is to mix acrylic paints, but you can still get a color pretty close to black with acrylic paints just by blending. If 
but I've definitely noticed that color blending works a little bit more easily with oil paint. What do you guys think? Got a little dark rock right there. Let's take some whites, make like a gray color. And more ochre and sienna. Fiona, hello. Nice, Davey. What kind of tea did you get? Can't quite get to the base here. Close enough. <laughs> Got a little shadow on this side. And let's take some umber. Let's put like a dark brown rock in there. I really like painting rocks. It's like a little puzzle. Lots of little pieces to them and then they look really nice when you do it. And you take your time with it. And we'll take some whites right there. Let's see, what else? If you want a nice creative artwork painting video, thank you. <laughs> Teresa says hello to everyone. Nice. Did you guys see my poll that I posted? I was asking if anyone would be interested in like super beginner videos. And the poll, I was surprised. Uh, it was like 94% of people said yes, they would like really, really beginner lessons for painting. So I'm thinking I'll put something like that together in the next few weeks, sometime in June. That one's going to take a lot of <laughs> research so that I make sure I'm not saying anything inaccurately. It's been a really long time since I took those classes myself, so I got to brush up on all that teaching, teaching methods. <laughs> Some more white right here. Oops, get a little bit of blue in there. A little bit more blue, my uh, light blue violet, these rocks. All right, and that's, that's about most of the rocks. I guess there's one right here. We'll fill in some color for that rock right there and I guess there's one like right here too. All right and then we can go to our flat tip brush again. Let's see. Davey said yeah oil painting tutorials would be good. All right nice good stuff. All right and then for this brush here we'll mix this lime vivid lime green with some yellow and some sap green. Oh that's, that's a little strong. Let's take some more of our sap green and some ochre and calm that down a little bit. There we go. And just kind of quickly doing brush strokes all over the place, kind of lifting the brush as I go here to create this look of some grasses. The actual plants in my reference photo are more like bushes with tiny little leaves. But I think for like this painting purpose, we're gonna just put some grass here. <laughs> and I'll take a little more ultramarine. Yeah. 
Okay, we'll take some Thelu. Let's do a couple little shadows in here. And back to our lime green, ochre, white. Warm it back up a little bit. So now the bottom's basically filled in. So our canvas, we covered up all the white space and we got our base color down. The sky is dry now. So let's do our clouds. And then we can start working on the hills here. And then I have a feeling we'll be running out of time and I'll finish the rest up later. Well, let's see, Anthony, I'm in the process of doing an acrylic series like that. Oh, okay. So I'll be out of the loop for a while. Gotcha. Oh, that's good. All right, we'll use this filber brush here and we're going to start with some light blue violet. I'm just going to blend this where I have a little bit of flesh tint. We're going to mix a little flesh tint in there. Some white. And this is a good... Mm, <laughs> let's mix a little, little tiny, tiny, tiny dab of phthalo in there. That was too much of a tiny dab. Get a little bit more of our flesh tint. Alright. Mm, still want it to be just like a hair more blue. Yeah, that'll work. Alright. And we're just gonna... So I'm using my filbert brush. I'm just kind of making little swirls and it's pressing on the canvas very gently. I'm just going right up to that hillside line because the clouds kind of come out like that. A couple more clouds in the back here, just very gently pressing. This is like a dry brush. By this point, there's barely any paint left on the brush. I'm just pushing it around. And then we've got another cloud up here. I'm gonna add a little more phthalo now. This one's higher up, a little ultramarine too. So because it's higher up, there's a little more contrast in the shadows because it's, this cloud's a little closer to us than those clouds. And there's like one more little one. I'm going to move it over a little to give it a little more balance. And again, just making little swirly motions. This is my brush. Okay, so we got the shadows all in there first. I'm just wiping the paint off of my brush. Davy always found it tricky painting clouds. Yeah, clouds are tough for a lot of people. I think it's the puffiness that gets a lot of people. A lot of people uh, are really good with line work, but then whenever it has to be really soft and subtle, that's where it gets a little tricky. All right, here we go. Hey, I was thinking about making a video about painting different types of clouds too. I have all these ideas and then I, <laughs> I need to take the time to put them into an actual product, right? <laughs> All right, and then you just take that lighter color. So I basically just blended some white into my brush with the colors that were already on there. And then just start making some little swirls again, kind of like half, half swirls, like not a full circle, just like the top part of it, if that makes sense. And just kind of go over some of your shadows. You don't have to completely cover up all of your shadows because you still want to have a, some depth built up here. And then like this, I made that line a little too harsh. So all I do is I take all the paint off my brush and then I just kind of make little swirls right there and then I'll blend it in and soften that up. So there's a lot of blending to make nice puffy clouds. Like these all look like really harsh lines. And then I get the extra paint off my brush and just kind of push the paint 
you put a little more force down whenever you take the paint off your brush, your brush and you're dry brushing, you can put a little more force onto the canvas. Said so, you want to come say hi? Come here. Come say hello. Here's Edge. Wow. <laughs> He's having a very exciting day. Laying around, barking at noises. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh yeah, skyscape or cloudscape? I've heard both, Davey. Yeah, yeah, cloud pinning landscape. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks guys. All right, glad that you like that idea. I will definitely add that to my list then. Because there are lots of different types of clouds. And then you, you just kind of keep on building up. So right now I feel like that there isn't enough contrast there to give these clouds depth. So I'll just go back with another layer of white over top and that'll help the clouds look a little more realistic. This is very beautiful. Thank you. That's Edge, my dog. <laughs> He's a hot dog today. And then we'll do the same thing for these clouds up here. Just build up all our little highlights. You can see it looks like there's a lot more contrast there already because I made that shadow a little darker. Kind of pushing the paint around. After you get the extra paint off your brush, I'm going to build up a shadow in there again. Sedge, don't you bark. <laughs> Sedge. <laughs> sorry guys, sorry if that was loud. Some days he just like loves to bark at nothing and some days he's really quiet. <laughs> just putting some paint down, taking the extra paint off the brush and then fluffing out the paint. Just building it up. And then if I used a smaller brush, I would get a little more detail going in these clouds, but I think we're going to keep this one a little looser. Let's get some more white paint.
<laughs> Let it rip, said. <laughs> nice. All right, it's looking pretty good. Damn, just add like some little white puffy fluffiness to the <laughs> to the sky here. And a lot of this is going to get covered up anyway because of the branches we're going to put there. So yeah, I'll leave that there for now. All right, now let's move down to here. I'm going to switch brushes. What do I want to use? Let's use, we'll use this little guy, little um, round tip brush. And all right, so let's start with this one that's a little farther back. First, let's mix a little bit of our flesh tint with our blue and white. Tiny bit of umber, and this is like the rock color in there, a little lighter. Just got a little bit of exposed rock in there. All right, and then we'll take some of our phthalo green with sap green and our light blue violet. And I'll do a little bit of phthalo blue too. A little ultramarine too, if I didn't put that in there yet. Okay, and we can start to do some shadows. So we're just going to do a little, taking the brush and doing little dabs that are giving me a little bit of like a tree line there. And if you make a mistake here, it's a little tricky because you got to let this dry, then fix up the sky behind it, and then fix up your tree line. But it's still possible if you make any mistakes, like you accidentally, you know, make a mark in the sky there. And we've got some shadows right above our and around our rocky areas. Kind of pushing the paint around, not totally covering up the whole thing, but covering up a lot of it because there are a lot of shadows here. All right, and then we'll go over and do some highlights. We're going to take some light, light, vivid green, lime, vivid lime green, <laughs> and some white and a little bit of phthalo green and a little flush tint. Let's do a little sap green in there. Mm. Let's add a little bit of light blue violet too. All right, and then I go in here and just add these little highlights right around your shadows. Just kind of push the brush around couple little sections. This is something that's in the far background, so you don't want to get too detailed and you don't want to get too much contrast here. And at the bottom, we have more autumn colors. So I'm gonna mix a little more yellow, flesh tint, and ochre. Start to add a little bit of the autumn foliage in here towards the base. Then we need a shadow right above the water. So I'm going to mix my, I had this like phthalo green color here and I'm mixing some umber into that. So like just phthalo plus umber would be a really good 
and a little bit of phthalo blue too. Phthalo green, umber, and phthalo blue. It's really dark, but it's a pretty dark shadow down here. So right above your water line, add this little shadow there. Now we basically got the back all good. Charlotte, hello, how are you? Thank you, she said looking pretty. KN, hello, Kevin from England, hello, welcome. Char, how's the like the baby and everything? I need to check on your channel. I have I've been very uh, minimally working this channel because I started that other channel and it's been taking up a lot of time. But now that one's rolling, so I can come back <laughs> and give you guys more attention on all of your channels. I really got to catch up with everything. She's fab. Good, yay! Alrighty, let's see. Now let's work on this guy. So we can make some more of our sap green and some phthalo blue, some of our light blue violet. Yeah, just so you can see. Sorry guys, sometimes I forget that you're watching. <laughs> uh, Alright, there we go. Makes a little bit of phthalo blue in there, or phthalo green in there too. And then we'll just get this little outline. Just kind of let the brush do little circle motions again, get you like a tree line here. If you want, you could just push the brush up and then I'll give you trees too. Lots of different ways to get that effect. Oh, baby sleeping, yay, very good. Catching up with everyone, nice. How's the COVID stuff going over there in England, guys? In the US, we're, um, I haven't looked at like the cases recently, but uh, they told us that if we are vaccinated, then we don't have to wear a mask anymore, so that's nice. But it still feels really awkward when like I went into Walmart and the person that entered before me asked the customer service if they needed to wear a mask if they were vaccinated and they said you don't have to wear a mask if you got your vaccine and then she took her mask off and started walking around and I was like yes I was excited and then I, I took mine off for a little bit and then I <laughs> people were staring at me so I put it back on. <laughs> It's still like a, uh, you know, an uncomfortable thing. So I guess we'll, you know, I'll just do what everybody else does. <laughs> okay, Davy said, getting back to normal should be better in June. That's good. Nice. Getting our little shadow right here at the base. Dark shadow there. And we'll just kind of push this up. It's a little bigger on this side here. Maybe a little more umber in there too, actually. Maybe not that much umber. <laughs> All right, and then let's go back to this flesh tint. We'll get a little bit of sienna in there. And we'll put this little, we got some rocks exposed here and it kind of flows down to over here. And then up here, there's a little bit too. And a lot of this is in shadow. So we need for the rocks and shadow, we're going to mix our blue with that dark neutral color I made before and just start to do some up and down 
little brush strokes here. You could use just straight blue, straight ultramarine blue. Got a deep shadow in there. And let's go back to our shadowy green color. Just start to add some sh darker shadows around here too. Right above the rock. A little bit down there. And another little one over there. All right, that's in general where the darker shadows are. Now we can add some nice highlights. All right, let's see. <laughs> Charlotte says, it's good good if I know what day it is or day or night. <laughs> I heard we're allowed to hug since 17th of May. Well, that's nice. Miserable weather in the South. Oh man. <laughs> Living the dream sounds awesome. Hugs are legal now. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> wow. Guys are getting lots of rain. We had a lot of rain and cold weather last week. And now it's really hot. <laughs> Alright, we'll take some more sap green. And like start yellow. Lots and lots of yellow. And some phthalo green. And some of the flush tint color. Flush tint helps to cool things down. Alright, good. And then we'll just start to add some little highlights on here. Just kind of let the brush bounce around, kind of making like little mountain-y M's, like rounded M shapes. Just really just push the brush around, twirl the brush so you get all the paint off the other sides of it. Starting with the green, and then we'll go in with some more colors after that. Mix a little more white in there. All right, that's basically the green. And then we'll go back with some phthalo. I just boost up some of the shadows in here. I don't want to have like a huge clump of green somewhere. I want to have good variety and I want to have some balance between my shadows and my highlights. All right, that's better. And then let's add some more colors. We'll take some yellow with ochre, more ochre, some white and a little vivid lime green. Bye, Shar, have a good night. <laughs> Now 
And here, just add a little more yellow. A little more yellow up in here too. There's not a lot of yellow at the top. It's like the colors were changing closest to the water first. And let's take some ochre and some red, cadmium red. Start to add a little bit of red in here. Just in a few little sections. One more blue. And then let's I'm just gonna finish this hill slope here and then we'll call it a day. I'm gonna take a little more of my umber with my light blue violet and just start to add a little oh, let's take some ultramarine blue too start to add a little bit of shadows in where the rocks are so it's not just a solid color there just a little bit of rock exposed right here and we'll take a little bit more of a highlight some lime green some yellow and some white. Just add a little more of a highlight on the treetops. One of our dark colors right here. Alright guys, cool, good enough. Alright, that's going to be it for today. Let me see how that's looking so far. Yeah, it looks pretty good so far. Okay, so we're basically good with the clouds, we're basically good with that background. Next week we will finish up the water, the rocks, this grassy area here and add the nice autumn trees that are kind of coming into the scene that aren't even in the painting at all yet. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys all have a great week and I will catch up with your channels this weekend. Thank you. Bye.